Today we are going to talk about the Medini by Cecilio Berry saxophone, currently available on Amazon.com. All right, so this morning, while doing a little bit of Christmas shopping for my chair, like a lot of us are, I suddenly noticed that a Berry saxophone that I purchased back in August for $11.99 is suddenly $9.99. Lucky me! So anyway, I thought now would be a good time to do a quick little review on this saxophone, give you some positives and negatives in case you are on the fence about getting in or just wondering out of curiosity if you can get a working Berry saxophone for under $1,000. So anyway, stick around. Here we go. All right, let's go over the positives first. The most obvious one is it's $999 for a Berry saxophone. When starting prices normally in the main three start between three and $5,000 and go all the way up to $15,000, to have a Berry saxophone for under $1,000 is insane. Um, now, some of the things that uh, are included on the horn that are not really listed very well in the Amazon, especially in the picture, uh, it does come with a floor peg, uh, which for some of you, that is going to be a saving grace, and I'll explain to that later. Um, it does come with the double arms on the lower keys to, for the extra support. That's actually a very good thing. Um, the case does have wheels. For some of you who don't want to be lugging this thing around and want to you know, push it around like you do airport luggage, that actually is a good plus. Um, but the most important thing that you're wanting to know is how is the intonation and how does it play? All right, so luckily, the intonation actually is really good. Um, from the high F sharp key all the way down to the low A, it actually plays in tune with itself. Um, that was a big surprise for me, and that the, my biggest worry, and it's probably the biggest worry for most of you out there. Now, as far as the tone, the tone is a brighter, more edgy, biting tone, which I like. Um, I'm also using a Bobby DeCalf power chamber mouthpiece, so you know that's obviously what I'm going for. But if you're wanting a darker sound on this, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with your choosing a mouthpiece. <laughs> the tone um it's nice and bright it, it's very it punches straight through where it needs to be then and the low really growls through so yeah i don't think you'll have any complaints on the way it sounds key mechanisms everything works the way they should the keys feel nice they are where they're supposed to be i can't say the same for some other horns that i actually have and i'll go over some of those at some other time um, but yeah everything plays and feels good even the low a is very easy to push low b flats are very easy to push there's not a lot of resistance to them so yeah um but other than that, it's actually, it's a pretty good horn, but. All right, so let's go over the negatives. Now, obviously with a horn um, of this price range, you are going to run into some quality control issues somewhere. You know, corners had to be cut somewhere in order to get it down to this price. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over a few of them. And the one I'm gonna get out of the way immediately is the one that's gonna affect you the most. Now, when you purchase this horn and you open it, there's a good chance it will not work right out of the box. Um, I've looked at other Amazon reviews. A lot of people keep coming into this same problem. So here are the two that I ran into. Now, the upper octave key it was not making any contact whatsoever with the tone hole. So I had to get a pair of needle nose pliers and bend it in two places in order to get it to seat properly. Also, the G sharp key down here, the uh, cup was not making any contact with the tone hole. Now, that one does come with an adjustment screw, but unfortunately, the adjustment was already at its max setting. So once again, I had to pair, you know, grab a pair of pliers and bend the, the arm down until it you know, reached the way it was supposed to. Now, once it did that, everything worked fairly well, with the exception of the low C sharp and the low B flat. For some odd reason, those keys are very, they're very stuffy when you play them. Now, as you're putting wind through the horn, when you run into those, you will notice a big resistance when it hits. Normally, that's a sign of a leak of some kind, but I have not been able to find one. And the part that blows my mind is that the low A comes out so easy along with the low B and the low C. Um, so it's just the low C sharp and low B flat for some reason. Um, G sharp also is a little bit on the stuffy side, but not nearly you know noticeable as the others. So just be aware of that. Um, now, as far as the... I do have to bring up the metal uh, that's made of some of these keys. 
one of the big things that you'll run into, especially that's kind of dangerous, as I mentioned, I had to bend some of these keys in order to make them work. Unfortunately, they were very easy to bend. Also, the palm keys, the side D, E flat, and F keys are very, very thin. You can actually accidentally bend those keys by just holding it in your hand just in the wrong way. Um, so some of the rods, some of the keys themselves, like I said, definitely those palm keys, are made of a very cheap metal. So you do kind of have to watch for that. Now, the body of the horn itself seems to be fine, just some of the keys and braces. Um, another thing that you might run into a problem with, and this is going to be a little bit of an embarrassing subject, but I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, get it out there. So if you're like me and you are, shall we say, horizontally enhanced or a little extra girth around the midsection, um, okay, fine fat, if you're fat, um, you might have a problem playing this horn with the neck strap. Uh, now, I haven't had this problem holding other berries even recently, but for some reason this one, um, I actually thought that the, the, maybe the neck hook was in the wrong place for a while when the balance was wrong, but it made it very difficult to keep the horn to where it needed to be because I kept hitting the side of my stomach. And I don't know why it's just this horn, uh, but just be aware that if you have, if you're extra if there's more of you to love than others, um, be aware you might have a problem getting it sitting correctly. Now, it wasn't impossible. It was just took a little extra work. Um, so it is doable, just not as easy as it should be. But that's probably a good sign that you should probably diet and exercise. Yeah, anyway, moving on. Uh, the other problem that I have is the bottom right hook for the thumb hurts like crazy. It's almost, for me, it seems like it's actually an inch to an inch and a half too low. Um, now, I know you can buy adjustment hooks for these that have like an actual setting on it, which I am going to do, which will fix the problem. But just be aware that if you're suddenly having a lot of pain in your right thumb while using this, um, that's most likely going to be it is because the hook, I think, is a little bit in the wrong place. So, but yeah. So anyway, so that's pretty much all the negatives I can say about it. So final thoughts. Should you go out and buy this horn? For me, if you are a doubler or if you do session work or studio work and you want a saxophone that's sitting on the stand, you need to use a berry you know, every now and again, by all means, go out and buy this. This is absolutely a phenomenal buy. You know, Under $1,000 now, if you want a berry saxophone, there is no reason not to go buy this saxophone. Now, I say that with a bit of caution, though. Um, if you are a student that's going to be using it for marching band or if you're a gigging musician and this is your primary horn and you're taking it on the road, throwing it in the back of equipment trailers and all that stuff, and you're always going to be getting it out of a case, it's harder to recommend wholeheartedly for you. The reason for, like, one, the cheaper metal and stuff, I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up for a lot of abuse. Uh, the other issue is the case is absolute garbage, and that case I know will not last. So you'll have to definitely buy a new case, and to be honest, a new Barry Saxophone case probably starts in around the $500 range, at least the ones that I've looked at for decent ones. So that's another hefty chunk of money you have to put on it. Um, but other than that, though, this horn, it plays in tune. It is $1,000 and just an absolute phenomenal buy for a berry saxophone. So if you are looking for a berry saxophone, I, I'd highly recommend getting this one for its price, its intonation. But be aware, you do have to make it work first. You, so you might have to send it to get, you know, send it off to a technician if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. So anyway, I hope that answers some questions that you guys may have had. If not, you can drop them in the comments. Uh, I will do my best to get to them. I'm not going to lie. I don't really check this channel that much, so I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for sticking around, and good luck.